I've lived in five different countries in Africa. I've lived in Malawi, Botswana, Zambia, Morocco, and Nigeria. I've also traveled extensively in South Africa, Zimbabwe, Namibia, and Egypt. Never once in all my years of living or traveling on the African continent have I been mistreated in any way because of my ethnicity, because of my skin color. And this is in spite of the fact that I come from a country who are guilty for some of the worst colonial crimes ever inflicted throughout human history. That's right, I was born in Great Britain. And without doubt, the British and the French committed the greatest atrocities across the continent of Africa. The Belgians have a good claim for the greatest atrocity in their treatment of the Congolese, but if one looks at it as an entity and the number of countries that were invaded by the British and French colonialists, one will see that they are the worst protagonists. Despite this, and despite the behavior of my ancestors, I have never been mistreated. In fact, I have been welcomed warmly in all of the countries I have lived in or visited. And when in Africa, I don't cocoon myself in some enclave dome which is inhabited by people who like to refer to themselves as expats. I hate that term. But no, I integrate as much as possible within local society. I will go to the Shabin. I will go to any compound and experience life as it is for people in the country where I am based. So whether that's in the village, whether it's in the township, whether it's in the local bar, I will integrate, I will mix, and I am always made welcome. Now contrast that with the way many Africans are treated when they choose to live in the United Kingdom or France or other parts of Europe. The difference is incredible. The everyday racism experienced by African people on the European continent is a crime against humanity. Now, there are different types of racism. The most obvious is the day-to-day -day experience that an African will have whilst living in parts of Europe. The name-calling, the staring, the subtle discrimination. And for many Africans, they will just brush it off because it is so common that they just get used to it, sadly. Worse, though, is the institutional and structural racism that Africans have to abide with. The restrictions on their movements, the fact that most passports emulating from the African continent will only allow Africans to travel visa-free to a handful of countries. And most of those will be other African countries or countries in the Caribbean. And moreover, the difficulty that Africans have finding work in Europe is unimaginable. People who are qualified as doctors, accountants, lawyers, university lecturers, nurses, teachers, do not have their qualifications and experiences recognized by most European countries. I know many people from Africa working in various parts of Europe as security guards or as care assistants when back home they had highly skilled professional jobs. But that experience is rarely recognized when they come to Europe unless they come as part of a transfer with an existing company. But if they come because they've migrated to Europe, their chances of accessing the sort of job which they are eminently capable of is slim. Now, if a black person was making this video, 
they would be quickly dismissed. They'd be dismissed as having an axe to grind or always trying to find problems. And again, that's part of racism. The fact that I can speak because of my white privilege means that I have a duty to do so, not because I'm married to an African woman or because I have many African friends, but because I like to think I'm a decent human being who appreciates the value in every person on our planet.